Hi kids, uh, today I'm going to show you how to cut a window mat. And there's a couple reasons why you might want to learn how to do this. Um, first reason is, just like in dry mounting, it helps uh, separate the image or the photograph from uh, the exterior world, so you have a, like a little frame around it, that always looks nice. Another reason is even if you dry mount a photograph and it looks really good, if you frame it and have the glass touching the front of the photograph, uh, condensation can uh, uh, form and there can be a deterioration on the surface of the print. So you always want to keep your artwork and especially your photographs uh, free or clear from the glass and a mat helps you uh, do this. Another reason that you might want to cut mats is for a show. So if you have 10 photographs and they're going to go on a show, you could pay somebody to cut a mat for you and doing one might be inexpensive but if you start to add it up you might consider buying a little uh, a matting a kit and I have been using one for about 40 years but I'll show you how I make it uh, work and then uh, how I cut my own mats uh, for shows and for hanging uh, things on the wall at home. And I do have a student's work here. This is going to be put into our student art show, which is coming up every spring at North Hampton. And so I like the image, so I took uh, uh, time to get it from her, and I'll just cut her a quick mat so that she can put that into the student art show. So the next step now is for me to show you all the things that I'm going to be using to cut a mat. First, I have my, uh, I do have some mat board that I pre-cut. These are 32 by 40, but I cut them down, uh, and I don't well, I need to show you that, uh, but I just use a regular straight edge and a, a good uh, quality uh, mat knife or utility knife with a sharp blade. And I always cut on something. You've got to cut this on. You don't want to just cut on a, on a tabletop or something because you'll dull the blade and you'll put scratches in the uh, tabletop. So I actually have two pieces because I'm going to make a sandwich out of this. One is going to be used for the, uh, uh, the cover, the front, with the window cut out, and then I'm going to sandwich it together using uh, tape, and then it just folds together and presents, uh, it's a nice, uh, like, a, like a sandwich, a cheese sandwich, or meat sandwich or something, and then you'll see the, the photograph in the middle, and then this can be dropped into a frame with glass for uh, putting on the wall or for uh, being in the show. Some of the other things I have here, is uh, I have a, a scissors, a scissors always comes in handy. Uh, here's a lovely a pencil with a dull blade. Uh, I got a matte color, you can never tell when you need that. I have a tape, and uh, what you want to do is make sure you get archival tape, and those are specialty items. Uh, Light Impression sells it. Um, uh, maybe your local frame store would have it. A freestyle photo uh, out in uh, Los Angeles, they sell this type of stuff. So you can find that all over. Uh, the other thing I have is, oh, is my little kneaded eraser. This is a little gum eraser kneader. That's good for erasing uh, pencil lines if you get them and you know, don't want to look at them. Uh, the other thing I have, oh, of course, I have a ruler. This is to measure your artwork and measure your face of your mat. And what else do I have? Oh, and then I have these little uh, corners. These corners allow you to, after you cut your uh, face of your mat, to uh, have the artwork underneath and these little corners will allow you to uh, secure the photograph or the artwork to your backing. And they come in all different shapes and sizes. These are like little corners. I'll pull one off and show you how I make it work. Again, light impressions at freestylephoto.biz out in LA, sell these and probably your local uh, uh, map or framing store. So on the blackboard, I uh, here's our print size. I measured the print. In fact, I'll get the print. Here I have the print, and I did a quick measurement here of the image. It's a little bigger than a 9, which is good, a little bigger than 9, so it's a 9 by 9. So it's a squarish sort of image. So I just added a little extra space, uh, made it a 16 by 16 in mat, 9 by 9 print, and what I do is uh, subtract the remaining space around it. And I'll start with the, the, uh, the, the horizontal part. You got 16 inches in one direction, 9 inches underneath. That leaves you with 7 inches. And of course, 7 inches you're going to divide in half. So each uh, of the right and left uh, borders will be 3.5 inches. 3.5 inches on the right, 3.5 inches on the left. I like to have a little more space on the bottom than the top for my uh, vertical placement. So again, we have 16, and subtract 9, you got 7 again. So I'll put 3 on top 
and four on the bottom just because that's easy to do. Uh, might not be perfectly uh, uh, mathematically in the what they call the visual center, but it's close enough. So now I'm ready to actually make my marks on the back of my map board. So let me go to my map board, put my photograph aside, figure out which one I really want to use here. We've got this one here. This one looks about the same as this one over here. Clear the deck. And now, what do I use to cut maps? Well, uh, I've been using for a number of years the Alto Easy Mac Cutter, and it's new and improved. Uh, I've been using it for last time, maybe 35 years or so. Uh, they really have improved it since the old days. Uh, this, it comes with a, a little jig, uh, and it also comes with a nice little uh, mat cutter uh, handheld that allows you to cut a beveled edge, and you can cut up to six ply mat board easily uh, with this. Uh, you can, uh, the blades need to be changed every so often. The, uh, what you cut on, this board here needs to be changed every so often. Otherwise, uh, after a while, it'll give you sort of ragged edges. So clean this uh, every now and then. When you see a lots of little lines in here, make sure you, you, you swap that out. And then this little jig here allows you to set the size easily for your, your borders. And remember, you're working on the back of the mat board. So let's see, following my instructions out here, uh, three and a half inches. I'll put on my glasses so I can see what I'm doing. I'm going to use this jig and I'll put it on three and a half. So the distance now from the edge of your mat to where the window is, is about three and a half inches. And I'll put my mat board right in here like this and I'll use my dull pencil to inscribe that. No one's going to see it because it's on the back. So there is the right hand side. Here is the left hand side, like that, nice and even, and then uh, I'll do the top and bottom. And as I said before on the blackboard, it's going to be three inches and four inches. So I'll put this at three, thusly, and I'll put this guy here at four. See, isn't the Ultra Easy Mat Cutter easy to use? Yes, it is. So there it is. Now, a little more space on the bottom than the top. These are equal distance. Now I'm ready to cut. So um, I've got my, I did um, do a little preliminary testings to go through some scraps just to make sure it goes through, but not too far because you don't want the blade to drag. That's, that's one thing. And then you, you want to make sure you, you get through in, in a cut. Otherwise, if you have to press down really, really hard, then again, that makes for not such good uh, uh, cuts. Now, the tricky part of the cutting the mat is to always start a little bit before the line and in one smooth operation, bring it a little bit beyond the line. That's called overcutting. So again, that's starting here and then cutting over the line a little bit. And overcutting is okay to have, uh, just don't get carried away. Um, if you have something done professionally, they all have computers, you don't have any overcuts whatsoever, but I'm doing this cheap because I'm cheap. Okay, so here we go. Cutting the uh, first four inch, thusly. Now I might as well go up to the three inch, swing this around. Here's the three inch. Slip. Now let's do the three and a half inch. Like so. And there we go. It pops right out. And here's our nice little frame all ready for us. Now let's get the photograph and see if it actually fits. So we'll put this guy right here. We're going to get our photo. And here's our photo. Oh, put it here on the back. Like so. Oh, isn't that nice? It fits, fits very nicely. There you go. Just like that. Now we're going to continue making our, our sandwich here. So here's the way you make a sandwich. You just flip the top over, put it on the top like this, and then you get out your uh, archival tape. And there's a bunch of different types. Uh, that you can get through Light Impressions or FreestylePhoto.com or your local uh, mat uh, cutting supply house. And go like that. I put one in the middle usually, like so, and then two more on either side. 
And here's where there's a different variety of ways of doing this, but this is just sort of standard the way I'm doing it. Got that guy there, and this guy over here. Take out the photograph. Now I'll take the top part, fold it over like our sandwich, kind of put it here like this, just tighten up those. Yeah, just like that. We're all we're all set here with our little sandwich here. Okay. Now let's get our photograph. We'll put this in here and make sure that it's in there good. And as I move it around, putting it in position, and I finally hit the point of. Nirvana. Looks very nice. Now we're ready to open up our sandwich and secure the image to the back of the board. And for this, I use these uh, these corners. Uh, Light Impressions distributes these. There's a bunch of different ones you can buy. Uh, these actually are too big, but I'll cut them down. You can get different sizes. Uh, you can get like postage stamp sizes. Now these are kind of nice because it's a little sticky on the back. So that's kind of nice. I'll just cut it down a little because this is kind of small. Cut these. We are going to fit the photograph in here. You can also make these corners out of paper, but that's another, that'll be another lecture. How to make corners. So I'll get the photograph here, just get it in here like this. Yeah, just like that. So then we can now adhere the photograph. There's a lot of different ways of doing it. I'm doing this quickly here, kind of like that. Press a little bit, like so. Now, th there's a little sticky backing on this, this particular corner, and it won't hold over the long run, you know. So then what I'll do is take a little bit of tape and just tape this in like so. So now this side is done, then I would repeat it for this, this, this. If you want to sign this print, I would sign it on the back of the photograph. Uh, and that way, should the print and the mat board become separate, then you always know who did this uh, photograph because, as I've mentioned, it's better to sign things because then they won't be thrown away. And 50 years from now, somebody will say, oh, look at this, and they find it in somebody's attic. So now, for signage, usually traditionally, you've got the title here. I would call it jazz or something. And then um, the, uh, the name of the person would be over here and the year, the date. And this is 2014, as I mentioned, it's for the student art show. I hope uh, the student gets into the art show, and I hope she, he, whoever, wins a prize.